Nice. Good evening, all. Welcome to uh, the January 22nd meeting of the Regional Governing Board of the Southwest Vermont Regional Technical School Center. Um, are there any public comments? Seeing none, we'll move on. Consent agenda. We have the minutes of the meeting for of the full board for December 18th. We have a motion. So moved. Second. For any, for any motion, add second. Any discussion? Seeing none, please raise your right hand if you're in favor. Unanimous. We don't have a little, oh, Sandy, you're doing the, meet, the meeting tonight, okay. All right, payroll warnings, number 18, number 1026, number 19, and number 1028. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. For any motion, again, second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, raise your right hand. It's unanimous. Vendor warrants, number 1027 and number 1029. So moved. Second. For any motion, again, second. 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 Or John's, I apologize. No, that's all right. Um, any discussion? I second. Yes, Ken. No, second. No, I already got my second. Thank you. Any discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, all raise your hand. I have one comment on the uh, vendor warrant. Thought it was interesting there that uh, you know we had an energizer plant right in our town. And we also have an operations manager on the board, but yeah, we bought Duracell batteries. <laughs> <laughs> they were cheaper. I, I, we, <laughs> I, I have to apologize. I, I shaved tonight with Gillette Blade. We generally do have someone who asks if we buy Energizer <laughs> on site, but it must have slipped. <laughs> we'll work on that next time, John. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, John, for your comment. All in favor, please raise your right hand. It's unanimous. Cash flow, the uh, memos in the uh, packet. Um, revenue expenses along with it. Committee reports, we had an education and facilities tonight. Ed Letourneau was chairman. We had a brief meeting primarily to update the board on activities that are going on in the facilities and what's needed, going to be needed down the road, like the roof repairs and the front steps. Probably part of the security system still needs to be fully upgraded. Educationally, we had a, had a short discussion on how we can advance some of our programs and nothing concrete came of it, but we're still kicking over ideas and considering ways to enhance some of our programs. Okay. I can elaborate. But no, that's all right. I don't know, but it's nope, it's perfect. No, that's fine. It's all fine. Oh, I thought you meant that. Good evening, Liam. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, action items. Warning of the ballot budget. Um, do we have that? In so the the um, the copy of the warning is in the Dropbox. Um, I'm just looking for your approval of this, and then I will pass it around for you to sign off on it. The warning will be posted at the town office. Um, I think in the next couple of days when it falls between the correct right, right. Okay. Date, like the okay. 30 and 45 days. Do we put that on our Facebook page too? Um, we haven't historically. We go to all the, you know, it goes to our town office who sends it around. Yeah. Um, and then we also um, show it at the joint board meeting for Bennington, the you know, when meeting. we have the, the form, well, the meeting with the finance um, with M or with SVSU. Right. Um, right. Right. And it goes, and it's in our annual report that goes out at the end is on our web right. page. Incidentally, and I'm related to that particular subject, but speaking about Facebook, I like seeing the, the posts that the CDC puts up there that go out to other people. But I got to thinking about 
particularly about the vet veterinary technician course that we're starting to offer. And I went looking at the link that was provided and I couldn't find any cost information and I thought maybe we should be putting that information out there too so that people have an idea of what the program that, that they could enroll in might cost without having to call the, yep. the CDC. That's, that's been updated on our Facebook page and, um, and the, reason, the reason that the price wasn't reflected in the... Um, we didn't know it? Well, not that we didn't know it, but we are um, currently talking with the local veterinary hospitals and other organizations who want to be partner partner organizations um, that we may perhaps offer some sort of, of discount, if you will, for the cost of the class as being a partner with us. And so we're still trying to figure that piece out. Uh, but the cost is still for anyone that wants to enroll in the, in the class. Um, and I'll talk about it during my super talent yeah. report. Um, I wasn't trying to criticize. That was just no. It was a great. It was a great. It was a great comment. And it was an observation I had when I went looking. We have a it's lot also helpful to get people in the door to understand that there's a lot of options for them in terms of helping to pay for that class. Right. I mean, we, we do want folks to call us um, because there are, a lot, as Stephanie indicated, a lot of options for for payments of class, whether that be <coughs> through a VSAC grant, or it might be some kind of Department of Labor funding, or there, there might be some internal Department of Labor, Department grant. Labor grants that we have. I mean, there's just so many different options for folks um, that, you know, that $1,600 may not be that their out-of-pocket cost for the class so uh, or the program. So it's we encourage them to come in and talk to us. And, it's a good I'm alternative possible. point that I didn't think about. Um, so the uh, the morning is in the Dropbox, um, and I'm going to, assuming that you uh, vote to approve it, I'm going to pass it around to have signed, and when it's within the proper warning period at the town, I'm going to bring it over to Cassie to have it posted. Where is it in the Dropbox? Um, under action items. It says full is empty. Um, January actually. We should have four of them. Um, go back to RBG. RBG. January. January. It is in there. Go back to the new department. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh. Is there any questions on? Uh, do you need a motion? Yes. I move it. Second. Brady <coughs> made the motion. Can second it. Now, what? Any discussion on this draft, please? Don't see any good morning. Excuse me. I just make a comment on it. Um, format and the language is the same uh, as it has been yes. every, every year yeah. minus obviously with the exceptions of warning the uh, amount of the budget and those things the the, the articles are all listed out the same as they are. <clears throat> I this probably isn't a place to mention this I'm what hey what the heck we're here the chairman you can do what you want uh, I would hope that everybody tries their best to make it to the town meeting. I know that it's maybe 15 minutes, it's probably more like five minutes at the most that it takes. It's more of a problem driving there, getting out, walking up the stairs, sitting down and, and making a show. And I also realize that there's many of our members that are also members of other school boards and thus the conflict makes it almost impossible for them. Uh, but if there is any way possible, I would really appreciate you doing your most to get out and be at that meeting come it's March uh, 2nd or when is it? The 5th um, this year. The meeting is Monday, March, Monday, March 5th, 5th yeah. and the vote will be um, Tuesday, March 6th. Right. It doesn't take 12 months if we don't do a whole lot, but sit there and uh, look nice for the public, I guess. Thank you. Well, sometimes we are asked questions. Yes, we are. Yeah. Would you like to see it? Yeah. Just, just don't work um, on it. That's my anybody have any other comments? Uh, see discussion? Right. Do we have to sign this? So, so yes. I, 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 well, the draft won't. I'm passing around and not. Oh, okay. okay. I'm, and there's a spot. 
All in favor? Raise your right hand, please. It's unanimous. Okay, we have a retirement. Would you uh, please do a little brief discussion about it? <clears throat> Mike? Uh, certainly. So I have a letter here, which I'll read, which is standard practice, which I do for all um, retirements or resignations. Um, contractually, for teachers who are retiring in this in this fiscal year, or this school year, you need to give notice to the school board by January to me by January sixth, um, in order to meet their their clause in, in the contract. So that's why this is coming um, to you in January. <clears throat> uh, dear Mike, it is with a deep feeling of gratitude and just a, ten a touch of sadness that I write this letter to inform you that I'll be retiring the teaching faculty of the SPCDC effective June 30th, 2018. You know that this letter was expected and that I've been expecting to retire after this academic year. However, I do want to express my thanks for the privilege of teaching the students of the CDC wherever they are during the past 22 years. I also want to express my gratitude for your leadership and friendship over many of those years. I feel confident that the CDC is moving in a good direction and that your leadership has a significant part to play in that confidence. I only hope that I may have played a small part in that development during my time with the CDC. I know that I'll miss teaching, but there are other fields to plow in the time I have left, and I retire with a confident and hopeful heart. Sincerely, Bruce Lee Clark. I'd like a motion to accept his. So moved. Retirement. Second. Fran moved. Second. John seconded. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, we won't be able to replace them. That's a possibility. Yeah. Excuse me. I think it pretty much goes with saying with regret. We'll accept it. <clears throat> All in favor? Please raise your hand. I believe it's unanimous. Field trips. Uh, the first field trip in your Dropbox uh, should be for cosmetology. It's their annual trip to New York City uh, to the International Beauty Show. Uh, the program cost is there. Um, in the past, they do a lot of fundraising for this trip every single year. Uh, last year, if you may recall, uh, <laughs> their trip was canceled. Uh, they were on their way down, and there was last year that time a big nor'easter coming up, and we had to bring them back on the train before they even got started. Um, well, they were actually already halfway to the city. And we no, they were there. We turned them the back around. So um, it was a good thing we did because the rail line was shut down for like two days. Um, so hopefully this year there's, there's no another nor'easter for them. Um, but we did get a refund last year. Um, the, the beauty show was good about giving us the money back because um, we couldn't attend uh, their stuff. So um, this is their annual trip before you tonight. Do we have a motion to accept that? So moved. Second. Franny motion and John second. <clears throat> all in favor, discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, raise your right hand. It's unanimous. The second field trip uh, in your packet is for the culinary arts program. Uh, this year it is for their competition in the Hyde Park, New York, uh, <coughs> the Culinary Institute of America. Uh, it's their regional pro star invitation. Uh, they did last year, you know, where they, they did win um, and went on to the Nationals, so. We have a motion, please. So moved. Brian. Brian made a motion. John made the second. I have a quick question. When we only have, for in this particular case, th it says three students are going to attend. Mm -hmm. How do we transport them? Do we have to take a bus for that, or can they be transported? It, in says, it says they're taking the we bus. Take, we take one of our vans, usually. Okay. One of our smaller vans. Right, and as Sandy noted, they, they have a lot of equipment to bring down. They have to bring their own equipment, so they may end up in a bigger... In a bus, but we, oh, we, tra okay. we transport I did not understand that element. I forgot last year we had to bring on an entire truckload of equipment. Correct. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Everything but the kitchen sink. <laughs> <Pretty right. laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Understood. They supplied the water. <laughs> Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, raise your right hand, please. Jim Adams. Okay. Superintendent's report. Good evening, everybody. Um, Thank you for coming out tonight and those watching on TV. Uh, for tonight, for the superintendent's report, I have a few items to address um, to you. 
Uh, the last month since our last meeting, we've been focused on our winter recruitment campaign. Um, uh, rising freshmen and sophomores from Mount Anthony have already been enrolled for starting enrollment for classes for next fall already. Um, this is the time of year. I know I mentioned that last month. We'll, we're focusing on the budget primarily, but um, we do heavy recruitment. And it seems early in the year, but it's when students are signing up for next year already. Um, so rising freshmen and sophomore, juniors and seniors will come next. Um, will I have any real, any kind of enrollment numbers for you until until spring? No. Uh, I mean, it's, everything is in, is in flux until, really until school starts. I can give you a good snapshot in um, May or June about what enrollment looks like for the fall, but that won't be anything you know, concrete, as you know, because numbers don't solidify until October uh, of the, this coming school year. So we expect, uh, Full enrollment in our short blocks again, our intro classes, I have no reason to believe that they won't fill or be nearly full. Um, they always have been in the past, and you know, we did our eighth grade tours here, um, and those freshmen went over, or rising freshmen went over and signed up for classes right afterwards, so um, that has proven fairly beneficial for us. Um, also, I'd like to talk about our adult education program. Uh, our LNA cohort for the fall, or the winter, is about to finish up, and they'll be testing um, they're written tests shortly. They're wrapping up their clinical. Uh, I signed certificates today, so they are nearing um, completion of their of their program. And Stephanie, there are 12, 12 or 13 students in the in the cohort. There are, and there are 10 testing. And 10 testing, yeah. So um, it, it looks like uh, they would probably be enough, enough students to run a second cohort, um, potentially the, the spring. I'm not certain yet, uh, but we're waiting on numbers. Um, for that, so that's going well. Also, our first CDL permit class um, is completed. Uh, the students have tested. I understand they're coming back for one more session um, with our instructor, uh, Tim, uh, not Tim Mullen, Tim, uh, Whitman. Tim Whitman, thank you. Uh, we're actually starting our second CDL permit class on February 27th, so we're gonna be running it again. Uh, and we hope that there's enough to run. I'm sure there will be. There was a lot of interest in, in this one. And as we, as we try every class, we learn new things. Um, we knew how hard this was going to be um, to begin with, and now that we've gone through it for uh, several weeks, we've seen areas that we can improve and areas that Tim has decided he wants to tweak some of the, the class um, to be more beneficial for students. So, um, and we're talking about a little bit different of a pricing structure um, for the program. Uh, there are a lot of nuances with it, including the physical, um, physical, physical exam, and where you can get that done, and the cost varies from one place to another. You know, everything from eighty dollars to two hundred and forty or something. It's, it's so there's a lot, there's a lot of moving components to it. So um, I've learned more about CDL in the last six weeks than uh, I thought I would. Um, also, our vet veterinary assistant um, program for adult ed launches Wednesday evening at five o'clock uh, here at the CDC. Um, it looks like we're going to have between five and eight students um, enrolled in that, and that's kind of the magic number we wanted to begin with. Um, I had a very rewarding meeting a couple weeks ago with um, almost all of the area veterinary hospitals and the practice managers who are completely on board with this certified program um, through Penn and, and us. Um, it was an hour and a half meeting, and I walked away feeling a real sense of, of pride and commitment from our community. Um, to support students who enroll in this veterinary assistant program. Uh, so much so that we moved, it was supposed, the date was going to be tonight is when we launched the, the class. We moved to Wednesday night so that all the area the hospitals could be here to pledge, pledge your support to the students who enrolled in the program and explain to them what it really means to work in a veterinary practice. So that shows the level of commitment from the um, our, our local and regional hospitals uh, that's for the program. I'll tell you that, that we've had a chance to really dive into the program um, and look at it closely, look at the curriculum, look at the number of hours to completion. Um, it, is, it is a serious <coughs> certificate program. It's not gonna be no walk in the park. Um, it is about 450 classroom hours um, with an additional 100 hours um, of, the, of the internship. So that, on a seven month average, that's between 12 and 15 hours a week of working on, on coursework. Um, so we're, we're excited about the program launching on Wednesday. Um, I think we're all a little nervous. It's, it's brand new, uh, just like the CDL was. And, um, you know, so that, 
should be great. Also, what's going to be coming before you, um, I believe next month is an opportunity uh, for our students in our building trades program uh, and also from our video productions program um, to attend, uh, potentially attend a, a rebuild um, in Puerto Rico as part of not directly affiliated with Habitat for Humanity. Not affiliated. Um, not affiliated, excuse me. Their um, fundraising is through Habitat. Fundraising is through Habitat. Um, and that's really been spearheaded by Jim Godine. He's part of the Building Trades Corporation. Um, and we've been, we met on that again today with the instructor. Um, the, the plan would be uh, still very loose. We'll have all the details for you when it comes before the board. Um, but student, there'll be three students from Building Trades, uh, one from Video Productions two chaperones here from the center. Um, uh, one being Meg, our assistant director, is, is planning on going because there'll be a female student going. Um, and they'll spend approximately a school week um, in Puerto Rico, just depending on when they get there and where they'll be at what, at what build site. And so I don't have all the details for you tonight, not even remotely, um, but I want to put it on your radar that this is going to come before the board for, it needs, it needs approval by the board. Um, and there are a lot of moving parts to it, but I can't think of a more um, incredible opportunity for students um, to to visit abroad and visit an area that's in great need of help, um, and then to have our video productions program video that, and then plan on bringing it back here and sharing it with our community and our and our board. Um, I think that's pretty powerful, and I'm I'm looking forward to sharing the details with you once I have them all. Um, you know that trip it is. <coughs> And it's going to be in March. I do know the window is March 17th through the, through the 30th. I do know the window. But a matter of when our students would travel and how they'd get there, the dates, et cetera, I don't have this for you. Good city. Yet. Stephanie, um, I, um, it's, it's, it's kind of it's moving. It depends on where the, the need is. Um, they're, they're working from the, um, from the beaches in. So uh, it's my understanding that students will be more inland um, in this build than they will directly on the coast, uh, and I'm sorry, I don't have the, I don't have the city. <coughs> you gonna take them on St. Patrick's Day? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know yet. <laughs> Do you have contact people down there too? Um, Jim Godine has been working closely with an organization yes. um, down there, and I believe he also has um, family, family in that area, so um, he, it sounds like he's been doing a lot of coordination in terms of, you know, with the housing and making sure people will have, um, you know, a kitchen to cook in and cots. And, and he's been you know. he's been communicating back and forth, and he has, you know, his feet on the ground um, in Puerto Rico, and has been doing this work for some time. And so there will be, be a, a lot of people um, for this build, not just from Vermont or from Bennington. Um, Sounds like there's about 20 from this group going. With this group also consists of people coming from Minnesota. So I'm not sure how. Um, I guess I'll have more details for you. I just wanted to put it on your radar that um, it will be coming before the board you know, during the terrific. February meeting. Yeah, I, I'm um, I'm excited about it. Well, well, it does send up red, red flags of nervousness. Um, I think that it's um, it's going to be a great opportunity, and I wouldn't I wouldn't want the students to miss it. Um, you know, all the logistics behind it to make it happen. So. I have one question going back. To what you said earlier about the pre-tech and the short block classes and students signing up. Do we ever have instances where we turn away students because the short block is full? Yes. Yeah. Well, um, not directly turn away. I mean, there's only so many seats in the short block. Yeah, or direct them into a we try to one that them. isn't their first choice. Right. Right. Not every student gets their first choice. Um, you know, they, however many freshmen there are uh, at Mount Anthony, and we're talking 250 or so freshmen, uh, rough number. Um, they choose a selection of one to ten of their short blocks, and that are not those are not just the ones here at the CDC. They're also the one offered at their home school, um, and so they get put in there, you know, from one to ten. So a student could be in one of our intro classes, and it could be choice number ten, um, or it could be choice number one. I don't, you know, um, so but some students don't get in because of the class fills. Um, which is a good thing, you know, that, that the class is full, not that the student can't get in, but that the class is full. The nice thing, though, um, to remind everybody about our intro classes is while they're designed for ninth and 10th graders, it doesn't mean that 
an 11th grader could take an intro class. In fact, they do. Um, you know, it's if you can't get in ninth grade, you could certainly try it in 10th grade. You could try it in 11th. You have plenty of opportunity to get into the um, any of our classes. If we turn some of them away, is that an indicator that maybe we should expand the number of intro courses? <clears throat> I'm just throwing out the question. I don't know <clears throat> if it's valid. No, it is a valid question, Ed. Um, I think that depends on <clears throat> on the course. As you know, last year we um, we attempted to expand med professions in a in a additional short block, and we didn't we didn't have a lot of students for it, and then we had a problem getting the instructor, so it, it worked out for the best. But could I see in some intro class areas where there certainly could be need for a second one potentially? Um, but there's certain what comes with that is hiring other other staff because there is no time for <coughs> contractual workday um, for teachers who are teaching already teaching an intro class in their two programs. You know, year one, year two. There's no time in the contractual day to add another another interest block. Many of our teachers teach their intro class in both semesters, um, so some teach in the fall and the spring, some teach it in both, or one or the other, so um, it all depends on, on teacher scheduling. Thank you. So it sounds like, Mike, if there is <coughs> two, three, four years in a row where one class continues to not be able to accommodate all the interests, that's when you're going to maybe in the education committee take a look at expanding that class, but it's, right. there needs to be sort of a trend there of yeah, I, I wouldn't. It wouldn't be a one-year blip. I mean, that would be mm -hmm. really something to have some data behind it. That uh, I'm, I'm making this example up, but you know, there are 16 students who are in building trades, <coughs> auto intro to automotive, and there's really 30 signups. You know, we, and we're only taking 16, and we consistently see that. And I think taking a look at, you know, how number one, can we expand it both space-wise and, and time-wise. Um, and what would that look like? And I think we would certainly do our due diligence to take a look at that if it was truly a pattern of, um, of overcrowding, you know, in a certain class. Are we tracking that data? We do. We do. Yeah. Uh, and no different than if we had an intro class that for some reason never ran, you know, or there's only two students in it every semester. We don't have any of those, but we would evaluate why are we running this and, you know, should we change it? Should we eliminate it? Should yep. we do something different with it? That's what I have for my report tonight. This is more questions. Yeah, on, on the billing straight, yeah. the numbers where uh, students you mentioned are going, is that because that's all we have that they're interested in going, or that's the number that maybe we can uh, slot for us? From the uh, it, it's, it's old, it's a combination. Stephanie, you, you were at the, the initial meeting and I wasn't. Uh, it's my understanding that you know, there's, there's only so much money um, to, to send to students and the faculty uh, because they're going to be doing some fundraising for it as well. Uh, also, students who are interested in going, not everyone's students interested in going, those that can physically go, in other words, they are in academic good standing you know, at, their, at their sending school. We're not going to pull a student out uh, who perhaps is failing over the class you know, for a week at a school. Um, and then, you know, other factors such as um, insurance coverage. And there are a lot of things that, that will go into it. Um, did, did we have to turn anybody away? Well, we haven't, no, no, no. Um, we actually right now have, um, the instructors have given us names of students that are interested in it. Um, and, and believe it or not, not everyone's students interested in it. Um, or, or the instructor doesn't feel that they are ready yet to go and do something like that. You know, the instructor has the best knowledge of the student's skill set and their maturity level um, and being able to handle themselves, you know. But we didn't just keep, put a cap on it, say only four can go. I, I'm not sure how, um, originally it was just a discussion, my understanding the discussion was about two building trades kids and then, you know, when we went to the meeting, Jim brought up the fact that it would be um, great to bring someone from the video production, which is how mm -hmm. that, um, came about and uh, the building trades instructor indicated that he might have three potentially that could go. So, and I think that's um, um, where we, the number three has come, has come from. And they're discussing that we probably need about a thousand dollars per, per um, person going um, between flight and food, um, some of which will be fundraising, some of it will come, up there. it sounds like they're hoping some of it might come out of the building trades corporation um, and then. Yeah. 
I, I guess my concern is, you know, if, if this is open to so-called all students, then uh, in building trades and one in 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 uh, photography, but um, I didn't want anybody turned down because of money concerns. No, there won't be anyone turn. I would say turned down strictly on money concerns. You know, like I said, we there's somewhat a we're still working on a small selection process of students who who are appropriate um, to go. The instructor feels will. Um, you know, has the skill set and, and knowledge and maturity level to handle traveling. Um, so it's a it's a long it's a long haul down there. Um, to today, it's you know, getting there is a between a 12 and 13 hour flights with connections um, in kind of remote areas. So um, you know, to, I don't mean to be. I'm not trying to dodge your your question. Jack. No, no. I I, I I I wish you would come back to us though if it is a money concern and. And let us know. I, well, absolutely, it will. If if for some reason we get into the planning process of this, and and it ends up that there isn't enough fundraising, or there isn't um, enough in the corporation, or whatever, I could we'll certainly bring that to the board um, at the March meet or at the February meeting, um, and or our subcommittee meeting, and to talk about that. If that's the case. Well, not not all kids are appropriate for a trip like this, right. and I, I fully understand that. And you know, sometimes you need a more compact unit to go because of transportation issues and I mean not you can't have eight kids in one car eight. well it's a lot for one one, one or two teachers to be yes. able to monitor the work of eight students on a project and right. we've got so many eyes and the teachers right, trying right, to do right. work too and so there's a but I, I just didn't want number. anybody not going because of monetary problems right I understand <laughs> Were there any educational review of the agricultural course short block that Mount Hinton was talking about the uh, offering? As far as it, how it affect the center, uh, I spoke with um, with Laura Boudreaux um, directly uh, about the class that I'm told is being offered. For next year uh, at, at my Anthony, um, I don't know if it'll run. It depends on enrollment, from what my understanding, um, on a sustainability type course. Um, you know, at Mount Anthony, as you know, we had a sustainability short block or intro class here. We tried for we had for almost five years to get it to run uh, in some capacity, and it just it just never took off. Um, for uh, I can't tell you why it was. Certainly, for not lack of trying or or expenditures and trying to make it happen, um, you know. And so, I did speak with um, Mount Anthony about if that program does run, how it really should be run by the technical center. Um, it's an already an improved program here or a short block here at the center, and how we would collaborate on that. Um, if in fact there is enough interest for that class to be, um, no pun intended, sustainable over time. Okay. Mike, have you heard from Jim Chamarki um, at the hospital at all? Um, the reason I ask is because they're creating five new positions up there, and I, I can't tell you exactly what it is. It's kind of like a social welfare kind of thing. Um, according to Jim, it's very difficult to hire people uh, for this position, and so he was talking. He just mentioned it to me, and I was also talking with the folks from CCV about our human services students um, possibly partnering with CCV into a pipeline into this position. So. I haven't heard from Jim dir directly. Okay, Rob, um, I'll, I'll mention it to him next yeah. time I see him. I might so. see him tomorrow morning at Rotary. I don't know if he's in the in the AM Rotary or not, but I'll be okay. there tomorrow morning. So okay, um, if yeah. he's there, I'll I'll seek him out. Yeah, there was there was some interest in talking to you and the human services instructor Great. about that. Great. So. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's all I have. Okay, good. I think that's pretty much it, except for I'd just like to uh, talk about the February meeting. In years past, we chose to pass up on February as a month off from the school boards. Sounds like Mike took away that pleasure. Not necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we I moved think this we... meeting so that it would cover That's correct. two months. I don't think there's much for alternatives, do you? So, um, 
historically you have taken February off and met either earlier in March, right, right after the March, the reorganization meeting. Correct. Um, the way that it falls uh, this year, the meeting would be on the, if we were met, would, would be on the 19th of February, um, which falls on That's President's exactly. Day and, and school vacation. Uh, so we could, I believe we should still have a meeting in February, although maybe particularly if we're talking about approving a, a, a field trip, you know, on the contents of Puerto Rico, and there's warrants to sign and things. Yeah. It may not be a long meeting, right. um, but I would propose it either be the 12th or the, or the 26th, I don't know. Um, um, I would think the 12th might make more sense, only that the 26th will be the week right before the floor. Be really close to the... And we may need, um, I think the, the uh, sooner we have approval to do the purchasing for the um, trip to Puerto Rico and things like that, the better probably would. So the 12th would be the preferred date. Yeah. So we're all going to have a meeting in February, right? <laughs> I just want you guys, I, I mean, I don't, I, I think that there's a reason to, so yeah, yeah we may as well. I just want to be sure the finger got pointed to the right person. <laughs> <laughs> Won't be the first time. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm sure Sandy will send out notices to us. Thank you very much, Sandy. You do a great job. Um, anybody else have any other comments? I do have one thing. Okay. I know. Um, I meant, forgot to mention it during my superintendent's report that um, our equipment grant that we received from the state, um, one that we get every year. Um, I, I've submitted that uh, and we've, we have substantial approval on it um, for um, for three pieces of, of, of equipment. It's a total of about $27,000. Nothing by itself costs that much. Um, there are three to four items that are in there and they've had substantial approval from the, from the state. So that's good news. We haven't purchased anything yet. Um, we're waiting on the final sign off um, from the Agency of Education. So I'm sure we'll have that the meet next week. Don't we normally get more than that amount? No, it averages between um, twenty-six to twenty-eight thousand dollars. I don't know what formula they use to determine that. I'm sure it's based on enrollment and other factors that we're not made aware of. But um, it's been about the same bed for the last several years, not substantially higher or lower. It's good news. Any other comments? Discussion? Okay. Say none. May I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Bring in motion. Bob second. All favor, raise your right hand. It's unanimous. Thank you. Good night, all. John, you still there?